All right, this is my super quick review of the G502 and the Razer um, Basilisk Ultimate. I believe the Ultimate just gives you this charging dock. Um, the charging dock works with these two leads underneath. The nice thing about the Basilisk is um, I'm a long time G502 user. This mouse is about four years old. I don't use it with the bottom pad or the weights and I needed an upgrade because the scroll wheel kind of stopped working. I thought I'll try the wireless G502 because I'm used to the shape and I like the shape. And the Basilisk is also a very, very, very similar shape to the G502. Um, it's got a slightly different ridge than the 502. So maybe a little less sloped or more sloped, depending on how you look at it. Um, the mice from the front look very similar as well. I mean, very similar. So <clears throat> I have no issue using either of these mice. I mean, I pick up this one and go just as easily as this one. And obviously my old G502 and I hold the mouse in what's more known as like a claw grip where my palm doesn't touch the mouse ever and I kind of click maybe up here at the very top of the mouse button um, and I'm only using my pinky to kind of grip on this side so what I can tell you about the G502 to using it for about five years as my main mouse is that it's a great mouse works well in all competitive shooting games and other games um, but as I've noticed with other Logitech products is the material choice they use is really bad. Uh, this rubberized coating is now completely smooth and gross. I had a Logitech trackball that used a very similar rubberized coating and it was just disgusting after a while. Um, picks up a lot of just nastiness in here, but I guess that's true with any uh, computer component. There's just a lot of crevices in this mouse. Um, there's like a sheen of oil that is just built up all along the mouse, and it's kind of gross. I could probably do it with the cleaning. Um, I don't use the sniper button ever. Logitech software is okay. I wish there wasn't a software, and that's where this mouse is nice because I can press these buttons to change the DPI, and it will show me what DPI it's at. Whereas with the Basilisk, it doesn't show you. There's a light on the bottom that supposedly shows to supposed to tell you what profile you're in but the profile doesn't really tell me anything if these buttons that switch the dpi aren't changing the profile they're just changing the dpi uh, so that's a loss for the razor uh, the other thing that <clears throat> is failing on the g502 is the scroll wheel um, you can see i can actually move it that much without actually scrolling that's a scroll and games will register this as a scroll so this is completely broken uh what i did like was that you can lock and unlock the scroll wheel the wireless g502 is identical to this mouse except for it's wireless and uh it has a much better scroll wheel um maybe because it's newer uh, it does look like it's hollow, like on my G903 or G900, I forget which one I had, but it has the free spinning, whereas the Razer does not, the Basilisk. <coughs> on the Basilisk, they've replaced the sniper button with this paddle that works pretty well. It's super tactile, way more than the button, and it can, it's actually removable. It just comes out like that. It holds on like a magnet, um, very much like uh, paddles on a like, a gaming controller, if you can call it that. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't really care about the RGB, so. Uh, but the Razer, I guess, wins there because the scroll wheel and this whole side lines up. Um, but this has been a great mouse. Uh, I don't use any weights. And uh, just another thing about the material choice is this keyboard, the G815. I've only had this for about two years and the keys have gotten so disgusting and there are not replaceable key sets for this keyboard. 
So this keyboard is a non-starter, even though I can type as fast as I possibly can on this keyboard compared to anything else. This has optical low profile switches, which might be why. <clears throat> the Basilisk has a nice charging stand, um, but I just can't be bothered to charge my mouse. And the power play mat is just completely ridiculous when there are better mouse surfaces for competitive play. So that's just a no-go too. Um, <clears throat> the cord has never bothered me and I don't even use a bungee. So if you're complaining about that, mm, I, don't know, I don't really see that as a valid complaint, having a cord. Um, Logitech, what I do like is that in here you can put the wireless receiver uh, just like on the Basilisk, so a little flap right here. Uh, one thing going for the Basilisk that the other one does not have is this wheel that allows you to change the resistance of the scroll wheel. So if I put that all the way up, uh, you can change actually how much resistance the scroll wheel has, and now it actually has a free scroll. So if you like to tune that, I guess that's nice, but I mean, what would be cool is to be able to tighten this one and still have the free scroll. That would be the end game scroll wheel. Um, I like how the dongle works for the Razer. It actually is a little USB that plugs into the charging station. And that makes sense for me. Whereas the Logitech one, it's actually a micro USB adapter to the USB dongle that you plug into this cord. Both mice, and here's why I'm returning them, charge with a micro USB. I honestly didn't think that they would come with this, so I didn't even check. I'm not aware of any devices that ship with a micro USB anymore, and it's just such a bad idea. Because I know those are gonna get broken, I'll never be able to charge these again. So yeah. they're both going back to the store, and I'll be getting a new G502, but wired. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> All right, I'd like to round out this review with some positives about these mice. First of all, I've used quite a few mice, um, lots of trackballs, lots of regular mice. And then here's a G502, the first one I had. Uh, here's the SE version, which is apparently slightly cheaper, uh, but I've had no problems with this. Uh, I use it significantly less because my daily driver is over here. Um, I got this EVGA one for free with a, a 3080, I think that's what it came with, a keyboard. And this one's fine too, I just don't like the shape as much to replace the G502. <clears throat> so, I guess really, if you haven't tried the G502, it's worth a try. It satisfies a lot of people's hands, and that's really what it's all about. So, <clears throat> if you were to need to replace your G502 or get a nice gaming mouse, I would go ahead and pick up the wireless G502, the Razer Basilisk, and a wired G502, G502, and see for yourself first if you like the grip of the G502 or the Razer Basilisk more. Whatever grip you like more, well, that's the mouse you should run. So it's all about ergonomics, and you'll probably be using it for long periods of time, so pick that one. <clears throat> um, being said, there's, there's nothing wrong with either of these wireless mice, um, except for the fact that, well, the micro USB should be uh, either USB-A or USB-C. Um, but they're both great mice. It's just, to me, it's not worth, let's see, the price of this is regularly 30 or $40, $30 on sale. Wired G502, as of now, uh, December 28th, 2021. The Basilisk is normal price. I haven't been following it too closely, but this package with the charger dock and everything for the Basilisk Ultimate was listed at $180 and it was on sale for $100 for Christmas. So I picked it up to try it out. And the same thing with the wireless G502, normally listed at $150, actually came in at $100 for me because of the Christmas sale. So each of these was $100, same price point, same pretty much shape. 
same problems. Um, I would consider the G502 better because I really like this click and scroll wheel. And also because I can see what DPI setting I'm currently using. I haven't tried the Razer software, but it's okay. So I'll be returning these because I prefer the one with the cord for $60 less.